Hi everyone, my name is Mike Lang, I'm the Cancer Bridges Survivor Network Coordinator and today I am here with Loren Capozzi who is a PhD student at the University of Calgary working with the Coolest Reed Health and Wellness Lab and the Thrive Center which is specifically around physical activity and uh, cancer survivorship. And That's so, right. Uh, Loren has a whole lot of knowledge to share with us at working in that field for the last couple years. And um, if you want to learn a bit more about what she does, you can check out the 2012 edition of Leap Magazine. And uh, that's her right there, front and center. And uh, yeah, you can learn a bit more about what she does. Um, working with head and neck cancer survivors, but also all sorts of uh, survivors at the that's Thrive right. Center. Yeah. So, Loren, why don't you just, first of all, just briefly go over some of the physical, some of the benefits of physical activity. Um, while you're going through treatments, but also once you finish treatments. Definitely, thank you, Mike. Um, we know physical activity is really important for cancer survivors throughout treatment and after treatment as well. And we actually have um, years and years of research to show the benefit of exercise uh, for cancer patients and for survivors. Um, physical activity helps with uh, quality of life, so that includes the physical functioning, being able to get up the stairs in your house, being able to do the yard work, getting out in the summertime and enjoying sports, um, and also the psychological and, and social functioning, so being able to participate um, and do the things that you usually love to enjoy with your family without um, dealing with too much fatigue. Um, we know exercise is very good with fatigue management, so helping to manage um, fatigue. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people um, think that if they're feeling tired, the last thing they want to do is go for a walk, but actually we know that being active can really help to manage mm -hmm. that fatigue. Mm -hmm. um, and there's numerous benefits. I think I can I know, go, you on can go forever, on for an hour. But... <laughs> I know. And actually, we probably will at some point get you uh, up on the Cancer Bridges on the educational video page uh, with a presentation. But um, so, so let's get to the myth. So a lot of survivors think that you know I wasn't I wasn't active before I was diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. Is it really going to help for me to be active after cancer? And you know, is that is that something that you hear quite often? And, and what would you say to totally. that? Totally, I think that's a really good question. A lot of people, especially after going through a diagnosis, the last thing they want to do is is you know make a big change and and start to become physically active, um, especially if they don't think it will really help. Hmm. Um, and that is a myth because it doesn't matter actually. And we have we have a research to support this. Um, what people did necessarily before they were diagnosed. We know that people who start being active after diagnosis can have many protective benefits of exercise, um, similar to people who were active before diagnosis. Mm. So um, getting started is, is sometimes difficult and it's really important to start slowly. So um, the recommendations from the Canadian Cancer Society are to get 150 minutes of aerobic conditioning, so that's your cardio, your walking, your cycling, um, your swimming, things like that, uh, per week. So 150 minutes of moderate aerobic uh, exercise per week, plus two days of strength training uh, in there. And that can sound like a lot when you're first getting started, especially after a diagnosis if you weren't active before. But starting slowly, so um, one or two days per week, a little bit of walking, and then maybe adding some stretching or some strength training mm -hmm. can really help manage fatigue, improve that strength, um, mm -hmm. and uh, get people And help active. you regain some of that vitality, I guess, that you totally, lost totally. cancer. Yeah, that's cool. And you know, I think it, it sometimes, um, it's hard, I think what you said, to make those life changes. Mm -hmm. um, but, but they're so important, and, and, it, and it, you, like the research shows, if you become active after a cancer diagnosis, you get just as much benefit as you do as people who were active before. That's right. And so uh, it's really, you know, there's really no reason to not uh, get into that. And I know that it's easy to say that, and it's difficult to do. But that's, that's right. exactly what you guys at the Thrive Center are all about, right? That it's is helping right. survivors sort of move through that phase and learn how to do these exercises and things like that, right? Exactly, and that's a good point. There's mm -hmm. definitely support to get started. Mm -hmm. So getting started after you've been diagnosed, if you weren't active before, again, can be a challenge. Um, but there's a lot of support. We have a free fitness center for cancer survivors down at the U of C called the Thrive Center. We have classes that we host at Wellspring. Um, mm -hmm. There's lots of programs um, that we run. So there, yeah. um, getting started um, is great when you have support. So yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, that's yeah. awesome. Well, thanks so much for being Thank with us, you, Lauren. Mike. Thank and you, And keep up the amazing work. And hopefully, for all those survivors who aren't here in Calgary and, and can't go down and see Loren at the Thrive Center, um, you know, there are different uh, initiatives that, will, that are taking place around the province. And uh, you can learn about some of those in the links that I have below this video. So uh, thanks again for spending some time with us. And uh, yeah, we'll see you around. Bye.